It's infinite, Jim, but not as we know it. For 2,000 years since the ancient Greeks, the concept infinite just meant non-finite. In the following millennia, all non-finite numbers were either positive and hugely big, or negative and hugely small. But I changed that at the end of the 20th century. I found a non-finite number that is neither big nor small nor anywhere in between. What is this number and what does infinite mean now? Let's start with finite numbers. My bank balance is finite and is smaller than I would like. My waistline is finite and is bigger than I would like. My inside leg measurement is finite and is exactly right. I know my legs have achieved a Goldilocks length because they fit all my trousers. We all have practical experience of finite numbers, but if I give you a secret number, x, how can you use mathematics to find out if it is finite or not? Pause the video now if you want to think about it for yourself. Welcome back. Every finite number x has the property x plus 1 is bigger than x. That seems obvious. If I add a pound to my bank balance, I will be richer. If I add an inch to my waistline, I will be fatter. And if I add an inch to my leg length, I will be taller. But all non-finite numbers x have the property x plus 1 equals x. Non-finite numbers don't get any bigger if we add 1, and they don't get any smaller if we subtract 1. So now we can tell if a number is finite or non-finite using this plus 1 test. But how can we tell if a number is big or small or something else? Come to think of it, how do we know that 3 is bigger than 2? Pause the video or rewind if you want to think about it for yourself. Welcome back. A number a is bigger than a number b exactly when a minus b is bigger than 0. In other words, a is bigger than b exactly when a minus b is positive. Try it. 3 is bigger than 2 because 3 minus 2 equals 1 and 1 is bigger than 0. In other words, 3 minus 2 is positive, so 3 is bigger than 2. Conversely, 2 is not bigger than 3 because 2 minus 3 equals minus 1 and minus 1 is not bigger than 0. We can use this positive test to prove that 1 over 0 is bigger than every finite number and minus 1 over 0 is smaller than every finite number. Be careful with the playlist. This video is the first video in the playlist because YouTube. So unless you want to watch all this again, select the shorts in the playlist. You know, we have a name for a number that is bigger than all finite numbers, and we call it infinity. So let's define that 1 over 0 is infinity, then, as a consequence, minus 1 over 0 is minus infinity. The positive test shows that infinity is bigger than minus infinity, which seems reasonable. We can also use the other test, the plus 1 test, to prove that infinity and minus infinity are non-finite. So one way of being non-finite is to be infinite. For 2,000 years, this was the only way of being non-finite, but then I came up with another way. By the way, if you want to apply the plus 1 test to infinity as 1 over 0, you will have to learn transreal arithmetic. You can study the school playlist, which is linked below and at the end of this video. You can work through it in, oh, an hour or so. Actually, it took me 10 years to figure out transreal arithmetic, so it might take you more than an hour, or a day, or a week, but definitely less than a year, probably. Just give it a go and see how you get on. If you're too busy right now, subscribe to Transmathematica so you're reminded to do it later. Do you remember I said my legs are a Goldilocks length, neither too long nor too short, but just right? This Goldilocks notion is formalised in mathematics by trichotomy. Trichotomy divides numbers up into three categories. Every number falls into just one of the three categories, smaller than zero, equal to zero, or greater than zero. Put another way, every number is one of negative, zero, or positive. As Goldilocks would say, this porridge is too cold, just right, or too hot. But trichotomy does not apply to all numbers. It does not apply to the number 0 over 0, which I named nullity. Worse than that, if we add nullity to any of the existing three categories, negative, zero or positive, we get a contradiction, and contradictions aren't usually allowed in mathematics. So what are we to do? Pause the video and think about it. Welcome back. I added nullity as a fourth category to make tetrachotomy. Every number falls into just one of the four categories, smaller than zero, equal to zero, bigger than zero, or equal to nullity. 
Notice that nullity does not have any categories that are smaller or greater than it, and that means nullity does not have any size relative to the finite or infinite numbers. Nullity is neither big, like plus infinity, small, like negative infinity, nor anywhere in between, like the finite numbers. The proof of this is linked below and in the playlist at the end of this video. You can whack through it in two minutes. For 2,000 years, numbers were either finite or else infinite, but I have moved us on. Now there is a third case. Numbers can be finite, infinite, or nullity.